All right, it's one o'clock on Tuesday, May the 19th. I'd like to call this meeting to order. I'd like to acknowledge we're on Treaty 1 territory in the traditional homeland of the Métis people. Um, in light of COVID-19, some members of council are with us via GoToMeetings. And it's easy for me to say I'll start on the bottom left. That would be you, Steve, for introductions. Oh, uh, I'm Steve Axley. And Graham? You're muted, Graham. You're muted, Graham. That's good. People know who he is. And Erwin Kumka is on. Hello, I'm Stan. I am Erwin <laughs> Kumka signing in. Thank Good you. Everyone. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Um, <laughs> Penny McMorris. And Mike Bartmanovich. Really well, and sitting at the back of the room is Lynn Kimmelman, our assistant CAO, and she's going to walk us through the financial plan a little later on. So we have the adoption of the agenda. Be it resolved, the agenda be adopted as presented. Can I have a mover? Mike? So moved. Second by Steve, thank you. Any additions to the agenda? Yes, please, if Mike? I may. Yep. Madam Reeve, I'd like to add uh, the fire hall water tap for discussion. All right, everybody get that? Any further, any further discussion? All those in favor? Hands or yay. Thank you, all in favor. Carried. Move on to the minutes of the May 5th, 2020 regular meeting of council. Be it resolved that the minutes of the May 5th, 2020 regular meeting of council be adopted as presented. Moved by Erwin, seconded by Steve. Any discussion on the minutes? All right. All those in favor? <coughs> All those carried. Thank you. We are doing it this way. Weird. All right. We are moving on to our financial plan hearing. So I will turn the meeting over to our CAO. Okay, so the uh, financial plan hearing was uh, published in the Winnipeg Free Press on two separate occasions, um, seven days apart. Uh, in addition, it was also posted on our website. Uh, it was mass emailed to the people who subscribe to our email service. Uh, the one difference this year with the typical hearing that, uh, diff that is different from a typical hearing is due to the COVID restrictions. Uh, we are not able to accommodate uh, physical attendance at our office. So I'll just read the statement that was included in the public hearing notice and all the other methods uh, that we distributed the notice. Uh, specifically this, due to COVID-19 social distancing constraints, physical attendance at our office will not be possible. Anyone wishing to present, ask questions, or register an objection may do so by written submission or by email. Arrangements may also be made to virtually present at the hearing by contacting our office no later than May 14, 2020. We did not get any uh, specific requests to join our virtual hearing. Uh, we did have a few people inquire with various questions uh, to which I responded uh, to their uh, different uh, questions. So um, that's all I have to say. Uh, our assistant CAO, Lynn, will uh, present various aspects of our financial plan uh, in summary form. For, for, for just, if yep. I can just ask a, a quick question. Sure. Uh, were any of the questions of a nature that would be of more general interest uh, to, to more than just the specific people that asked the questions? Um, yeah, there may be, and we could always post that uh, in summary form on our website if council wants us to do that. Oh, okay. sure. In terms of Thank you. The, uh, the Good. Whatever the questions were and how they were answered. Good, that would be great. Thank yeah. you. Okay. okay. All right, Lynn, do you want to come closer yeah. so that you sure. we can hear you better? And
it's always interesting to start with our mill rates and our mill rate for 2020 is 29.08 mills uh, that's composed of the school mill rate which is 14.89 and the municipal mill rate of 14.19 uh, this year's increase from 2019 is 0.65 mills or 2.286% increase. Uh, the highlights of our financial plan are um, the VB water plant generator. Uh, we budgeted 105,000 partially uh, financed through the capital development and the gas tax reserves. Uh, Albert Beach water system generator, uh, 5,000 through the capital development reserve. Um, the Albert Beach dike road improvement, uh, we budgeted 100,000 and that will come through the general reserve and some miscellaneous equipment for approximately $20,000. The expenditures are in transportation because we're bringing in the revenue of the 100000 for the Albert Beach Dyke Road, we'll be expensing it through transportation for $125,000. Um, we have bear resistance bins this year we're really excited about. Um, we budgeted $22,000 for them and we'll be selling them for two hundred and fifteen, dollars which will fully recover our cost of the bins. We're selling them right now. Yeah. <laughs> Call us. Um, the utility generator and installation we covered. Um, another thing we're, we're pretty excited about, we have a, a full-time mechanic now. Um, so that should help reduce the cost of our equipment repairs and maintenance. And we also have a dog control officer, which we started in the middle of last year, but we have him for the full year and his name and contact information is on our website in the fire department we are doing virtual training again this year which fits in really well with social distancing yeah, no um, the police we're having to we have to use a, co a rent we have to rent out accommodations for them this year that's five thousand dollars they're also doing some specialized training for fourteen thousand um, golf course we're going to do some renovations at the clubhouse for ten thousand and we are putting in some new coolers at the vb store and I think there's a couple of, there's coolers and a couple other repairs there for 20000 The doctor's cottage is having its roof replaced for 8500 And again, this year we have municipal stairs. We are budgeting $25,000. And those mm -hmm. are the real highlights of our financial plan this year. Okay. Okay. <coughs> All right. Can I ask, can I ask just sure. this, Graham, uh, to double check, Graham, I don't know if you've got the number with you, but uh, the uh, is is $8,500 the number for the uh, for the doctor's cottage? No. No, it's not. Um, a uh, number had to be put in uh, for budget purposes. Um, the uh, contract has already been. Uh, uh, awarded for less than five thousand dollars. I'm sorry, less than four thousand okay. dollars. Um, and furthermore, uh, we had to put in a number, but uh, you know we always know more now than we did <laughs> weeks ago. Uh, it's it's highly likely that what we have to spend this year on the stairs uh, will probably be uh, quite a bit less than the twenty-five thousand that's uh, in there at the moment. So even though these are the figures that we were 
obliged to put in um, as uh, estimates and make sure they were adequate to cover it. It's refreshing to know that in uh, uh, a number of them, it looks like the expenses is going to be quite a bit less. What uh, less than what had been forecast and budgeted, and we're we're trying to do that every step of the way. If we can bring it in for uh, for less, by all means, we'll do so. Thanks, Graham. Well, with respect with respect to the doctor's cabin, you know, there's also a contingency in case we have to start replacing some of the the roof boards, which is likely to happen with respect to the age of that building. That's true. That's absolutely true, uh, Erwin. And we'll find out more about that uh, probably before midnight tomorrow. And uh, I'll keep our council advised. Okay. Steve, did you have a comment? Are you good? Okay. I guess so. Any other questions from council? Lynn, did you have more to add? Um, one other example I was going to give was assessment to tax increase. So if we use an example of a $300,000 assessed cottage, um, the increase should be $87.75 with the mineral rate increase. Or if you want to break it down per $100,000, it would be $29.25. And because we don't have uh, an assessment year, most people's assessment will remain the same, unless you have added taxes or cancellations. Mm -hmm. okay. Very good. Thank you very much. Yeah. Any other questions, gentlemen? No? <laughs> Raymond, do you want to add anything? Lynn, you're good. Mike? I'm good, yeah. All right. Thanks, well, Lynn. thank you very much, Lynn and Raymond. Um, yes, and thank you, Raymond. Too. Hearing no further objections or questions, we'll call the RMVB 2020 financial plan hearing closed, and we'll carry on with the rest of our meeting. We don't have any delegations, so we will move on to our committee report, and we will start with public works. Okay. To much jubilation, on Monday, May 11th, the Victoria Beach water system was turned on. Uh, for the most part, uh, yeah. there were no problems. Unfortunately, with the uh, with the cool weather that we'd experienced leading up to the May long weekend, and as Irwin has discovered under his uh, cabin, uh, some of the some of the main water lines were frozen, particularly in the David Road and Bayview area. Bayview, yeah. Um, I believe. The crews are working on these problems, and I believe they have been rectified now. So not quite yet. No. Not quite yet. We still have a little bit of freezing. Yeah. Okay. Um, we ask uh, anybody while you're walking, still, if you hear water running, um, uh, call Public Works, and uh, and have them come out and, and have a look at it. And as always, we have the standard boil watery advisory in place because we're starting uh, the water for the first time. So. Uh, remember that there is a boil water advisory in place. Uh, it's imposed by the provincial government. Uh, once it's lifted, we will of course send out an announcement to everyone knowing that the water is once again of uh, potable quality. Can I, Graham, could I just ask you to mute your mic for... Yeah. There's, thank you so much. Okay. Okay. Um, I hate having to bring it up, but uh, there are a couple of reminders here as well. Um, at Public Works, there are uh, two GFL recycling bins. There is a bin for commingled, that's plastic, cardboard, aluminum, tin, um, and a smaller one for glass. Please, folks, the big one is not for garbage. It's not for clothing items, which I have actually personally watched someone fish out of the bin. And it is not for styrofoam. Styrofoam is not recyclable. For plastic bags. That's right. Plastic bags, if you'll notice, if they're plastic shopping bags, as you walk up the steps uh, to, the, to the platform, uh, there is a small box on the right-hand side. That is where you put your shopping bags. Okay? Um, every time something contaminates our recycling, it costs us money. Um, 
garbage bins themselves are for household garbage only. No construction material, no brush, no old barbecues, no furniture, and so forth. Okay? Um, matter of fact, if you go to the Victoria Beach website, it lists the acceptable items at the e-waste station. Brush piles. People are starting to clean up their yards and making their yards fire safe. It's great to see. But a reminder, brush piles are for brush only. No building materials, no old boards with nails, no rocks, no metal poles, just trees and brush, please. Um, and no one back. Oh, yeah, and yeah. <laughs> if you, There's about four or five piles around here that are just, they're, they're, they're non bag leaves. Okay, and if you are going to bag, although it is, it is, it may not be seen as environmentally friendly, uh, um, leaves uh, and such should be in clear plastic bags, so that uh, okay. so that Public Works, when they come to pick up those bags, know what's in them. Um, I have had a couple of comments as why don't we use the environmentally friendly bags? Well, the reason for that is is that these bags are going to sit on the boulevards for weeks Perhaps, okay yeah. the rain has a way of, uh, of degrading the integrity of these bags and uh, it ends up being an absolute mess when it comes time to pick up uh, the public work so please forgive us this one time where plastic really is the best choice for wrapping uh, your leaves and, and small twigs and such um, don't leave any appliances <laughs> at, the gar at the garbage and recycling area, please. They must be transported to the Traverse Bay landfill. And can you get a uh, dump pass at Public Works? You sure can. You can uh, request a dump pass. They're, they're tightening things up at the Traverse Bay landfill uh, now where they want to see a pass. Uh, contact Public Works and the Public Works folks uh, will hook you up with a pass that you hang from your rearview mirror. Not unlike a parking pass in from your from your office building. Um, as Lynn mentioned, uh, the newest member of our Public Works crew is a mechanic, a heavy machine mechanic, diesel mechanic, I believe. So that's great having him on board, and uh, he's maintained not only Public Works, but he's also doing what he can to increase the longevity of our firefighting equipment as well. Uh, water samples from the well at the fire hall and the Albert Beach Pump House are taken into Winnipeg regularly for mandatory testing. And the fine folks at Public Works finally remind you, don't forget to register with the new communication system. It's Victoria Beach Connect. And I believe there's information about it on the RM website. And I know there's at least one post uh, about it uh, on the RM's Facebook page, which is RM of Victoria Beach. And everyone was sent a postcard. And everyone was sent the little postcards. So. Those attractive little postcards. I saved mine. <laughs> That's Public Works. Thank you. Great report. Uh, finance is up next. Erwin? Good afternoon, everyone. Um, we'll, we're, my report will provide you with results as of April 30th. I have a copy of my report as emailed to you earlier. Uh, the reserves of the municipality uh, increased by $34,631 as of the end of April. Our accounts receivable for April 30th stood at $164,000 compared to last year's number of $159,000, almost the same. Cash is down $75,000 over last year's amount of $167,000. Our operating deficit to date is 424,000 compared to last year's deficit at this time of 369,000. Combining reserves, cash and receivables, we are $35,000 lower than what we were last year at this time. Total assets at the end of April stood at 2.8 million, $2,854,000 compared to 2 million 667,000 or an increase of $186,000. The overall status is pretty much a, a, a stand path as compared to last year. Uh, my colleague 
Mike pointed out that my graph shows in gray a surplus, but really it's really a deficit. Um, the deficit is a little larger than it was last year, uh, but given uh, the purchases that we have made, uh, still seems to be pretty reasonable. We have sufficient reserves and credit to carry us through till the end of June when our tax revenues begin to flow in again. So. Great. Thank you very much. Any questions for Irwin? No? Thank you, Irwin. Thank you very much. Moving on to protective services. Steve, do you want to start with fire? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, just let me grab it here. Uh, um, okay, th this is, uh, this is for March, so just, to, just so everybody knows that uh, it's not immediate. Um, there was a total of nine calls uh, that month. Uh, seven of the calls were uh, in the RM about Alexander. Five calls uh, were of uh, medical uh, nature. Uh, one call uh, was to help uh, was to help lifting a large uh, person into pine, into the Pine, pine Falls ambulance. Uh, one call was for someone uh, that had uh, lit a brush pile on fire uh, along Snow Snowmobile Trail. Uh, just one note on that um, is that everybody needs to understand that there is a fireman on right now um and that there was a fire um that the uh, that the police and the fire um uh, uh, the fire service had to go attend to uh, the other night because some people were getting a little bit uh, too rowdy it was also an illegal fire pit uh, as well as um it, it was starting to get out of control so this is a time when the entire rm uh, has been under a three-year uh, drought and uh, it's not a time to have any fire and if you're going to have one it has to be during the time when that we don't have a fire ban on uh, the arm of Victoria Beach uh, also had two uh, two calls uh, this month uh, one uh, one call was a medical nature and the other call uh, was for a person not practicing uh, social distancing and uh, pulling each other around uh, be, uh, behind an ORB uh, one note on that is that uh, there was also a couple of uh, instances where um, the uh, police and fire service were called out uh, uh, just recently in the last week uh, for people who were social distancing and right now is really critical because we have uh, people who are coming uh, back to uh, the RM even though they're told to uh, isolate for two weeks um, you still have to always get uh, have to, uh, you have to maintain that social distancing uh, regardless uh, this is not a time to uh, to play around uh, the fire personnel uh, are are practicing uh, safe distancing and have discontinued any uh, any unnecessary meetings uh, and they continue to have the preparedness and uh, will uh, will attend uh, any call um, uh, that they're that they are called to and that is the fire report thank you very much Steve and it should be noted that um, fire permits will not be issued until after the fire ban and I believe our fire chief says if you were approved last year and nothing has changed and you apply for your fire permit this year it will be a very quick turnaround mm -hmm. not what we had last year because yeah. so many so many were being checked but we have lists and if there were conditions those conditions have to be met before a fire permit will be issued after the fire ban is off Mm -hmm. Yeah, last year's yeah. short-term pain For was this worth the long-term gain. Yeah, well, the, the fire permit was redone. The, okay. Yeah, the fire permit was completely redone last year with the intent that uh, a, a property would be uh, continuously safe for a long period of time. So I think that we, I think we settled on a three or five-year um, uh, refresh. That uh, every three or five years, then the mm -hmm. uh, then the uh, uh, fire department would be able to come out and, and uh, recertify your uh, permit. But yeah, you're right. It, it it is ongoing once you have one because you have to uh, fall under so many criteria before you can get one. Yeah, and you still have Steve, to. Steve, a question. A yeah. question, Steve. Do I physically have to go to the fire hall to apply for? I I, I have an approved permit from last year. How do I get it renewed? Can I go online, or do I have to physically go to the fire hall? You can go online. Uh, either uh, they, they they have them at the fire hall, but uh, it's it's also online as well. It is online. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Police Mike. Well, well, here you go. The boys and girls in blue had a busy, busy April. Yes, they did. Okay. Uh, some of the highlights: five suspicious activities. So, folks, please. Don't be afraid to keep an eye, not only on your own property, but on your neighbor's property as well. Um, there were six ORV-related calls, 
at least one of them was probably what Steve uh, uh, alluded to, and that is just irresponsible operation of ORVs specific to COVID-19 uh, social distancing. But again, a reminder, uh, everyone, the, uh, the AB to VB trail, the, the rail bed on the causeway is now off limits to ORVs until uh, the Tuesday following Thanksgiving. Um, you, will, you, you can still proceed along the side of the roadway, but if you do so, please do so uh, with caution. There were also 25 highway traffic actions taken in April, and anybody who came out to the lake those last couple of weekends uh, felt the presence of our, of our police force. Now, it may have been a minor inconvenience to some, but uh, out of those uh, check stops, uh, the police were able to identify and, uh, and apprehend several drivers with either uh, suspended licenses, driving without a license, and also unregistered vehicles. Mm -hmm. So think of one of these vehicles getting into a crack up with you. You may be completely out of luck uh, insurance wise. So um, don't mind the minor inconvenience. Uh, the, our police are doing this uh, for all of us. Um, oh yes, and a ha <laughs> maybe not a happy note for everyone. The, uh, the traffic laser has now been recertified so I would ask everybody, please watch your speed. And a reminder that the speed limit on Highway 59 from Saffy Road North is all 70 kilometers per hour, please. Yeah. They changed that in, in double time, yeah. the, the highway. Um, I, I, I just wanted to note um, just uh, one or two things. Uh, the very first is that uh, all the police that uh, uh, that, that we have employed are fully trained and um, are licensed to be practicing. Um, so there are no issues with uh, any sort of lack of training for any of our officers. Um, the second point that I'd like to make is that they are officers. That they're not, uh, that they're not boys. Whoops. <laughs> they're police officers. Uh, and that's, uh, very often to our uh, our police service to uh, to hire so uh, they're extremely efficient at what they do they're very good at what they do and they are they are absolutely protecting us and they do enjoy my full support thank you uh, before I conclude yeah. I want to allude to uh, the same situation that uh, that Steve alluded to on on Sunday evening where uh, where evidently a, a rental house uh, in the in the Sand Cliffs area uh, the renters despite the fact that there's signage all over the place saying COVID-19 precautions in effect, fire ban in effect, decided that they had to have a bonfire in a non-approved, uh, non-permitted uh, fire pit, and they also shot fireworks uh, down the sand cliffs and actually caught trees on fire. Oh, God. The fire department was called out. Fortunately, where the fireworks landed, there was a hollow so they didn't last very long, but they did manage to set fire to a couple of trees temporarily and send quite the plume of flame uh, up. Um, I'm going to be uh, talking with, uh, with Gary and, and every and any fine that we can uh, put on the property owner, we are going to put on the property owner because had we had an east wind and in mm -hmm. the summertime, southeast winds are not rare, it could have been absolutely devastating. So you're going through the police board for this though, right? Yes, through the police board for this. Okay. And also, um, man, and wouldn't you know it, as soon as this fire was out, and thank goodness we had the sand ladder there, because yeah. that was the only way they could get up and down there comfortably, carrying water packs, oh. full gear. And as soon as they had that out, they had to zip off the Bel Air because another firework started long grass fire. So folks, Please, please, please be careful. Respect the fire ban. Unfortunately, it's not. There's no fire ban in the arm of Alexander, to my knowledge. Or uh, is there? I was Do hoping there would be after the May 12th meeting, but it doesn't sound like it. But Victoria Beach and St. Clement, they both have uh, fire bans on, as do several other municipalities. <laughs> provincial fire ban on right now. It's well. It's not it's a really. It's a restriction. It's not a yeah. full yeah. fire ban. Yeah. But and just to be, to be clear on fireworks, they are not permitted at any, any time, time of the year. Yeah. 
without written permission of council and we give that from time to time when people do it out uh, you know they have they hire a professional to do it and it's done with within our parameters yeah uh, Albert Beach every year have the fireworks displayed it's well controlled yeah. mm -hmm. okay. always happy to be the bearer of good news that's my report thank you and thanks to our VB police and our firefighters absolutely um, any further questions for Mike sorry no all right moving on to special events there will be no special events <laughs> this summer <laughs> and you know I, so. I thought of that the other day I thought thank goodness it wasn't our hundredth anniversary this year oh my gosh it's Manitoba's 150 but it's yeah. uh, but it's not ours and on that note I've been getting a lot of questions about whether or not the Victoria Beach Club is running events this summer they are independent of the municipality so if anyone needs to know what their plans are they should contact uh, Victoria Beach Club directly same with the Victoria Beach Yacht Club they are independent uh, both of them are are uh, putting some things on hold but may have some things on the go following COVID-19 rules and regulations so please check with them directly um, yeah so moving on to the golf course back to you then mike the golf course is open it sure is the golf course looks really nice the golf course is enforcing protocols with social distancing um and uh they are featuring no touch putting they have installed cups hmm. uh, that sit uh, high above the bottom of the cups where your ball is still half visible after you uh, after you put it in hopefully you put it in and you can take it without having to touch the flag um, most people that I speak to are, are basically playing if you hit the flag with your putt you consider it in just to hmm. just to give everybody a chance to work on their handicap a little bit <laughs> <laughs> and the and the renovations are are set to begin yeah. all right I was up to see Carl yesterday to pick up some money and uh, he had a very busy day on mm -hmm. Sunday, not quite as busy yesterday, but he said people are coming in pockets, in groups. Yeah. And uh, he said it did get a little crowded, so you know he can't be out there monitoring everyone and separating people, so please be responsible. Yeah, that's, that's what it you comes know. down to. Yeah. Um, municipal buildings, Graham, you're up. Okay, my Jim. Um, as uh, you uh, will have noticed, I, I hope I submitted my report and a rather lengthy uh, spreadsheet uh, a day or two ago. Um, just an overview of the report. Our work on various for, uh, projects has begun and quotes are being evaluated on others. Uh, as for my uh, submitted report, that includes the golf course clubhouse run renovations, new lighting repairs, money repairs are in the, in progress, and others in connection with the uh, with the uh, safety report. Uh, VB store appliances uh, 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 that's worked out very well with uh, with uh, Lisa's help and the uh, doctor's office roofing. Um, uh, it was only a, a it was very, very recently uh, uh, we received news that the uh, doctor's office uh, uh, would not be operating this year. We took a look at canceling the re-roofing, but the materials had already been bought. Yeah, and uh, work, needs, work needs to be done. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just going to be that much worse if we uh, postpone another year. And the doctor's committee, uh, care of uh, Earl and uh, agreed with that. Um, the, uh, the uh, um, um, uh, public works uh, went overlaps with accessibility, an important item. The uh, ramps at the uh, at the bakery and the VB store. I think we've got all we're going to get in terms of quotes and proposals. Uh, so I'll uh, I'll bring this up, and I think we'll be uh, we'll, we'll be ready to uh, uh, award a contract on uh, on uh, several of those uh, items. I'll talk to. Uh, I'll talk to him later. The Sandy Bay steps, we had uh, uh, some proposals on the Sandy Bay steps, but um, uh, there's a, quite a big disparity uh, uh, from uh, one to the other. The problem was the Sandy Bay steps, a dam had been swallowed by that sand dune. So none of the uh, uh, invited contractors were really able to get as good of a look as they should. So we've uh, arranged for the uh, steps to be cleared uh, the uh, sand should be removed 
and then the uh, interest in contractors are going to revisit it when they have a chance to uh, get a, a, a better look at it. Um, that way we can operate on a, uh, it's more a question of uh, uh, leveling the playing field and make sure it's been shown off so we can see it. Um, we're looking into uh, uh, the electric doors once again in deference to our accessibility obligations uh, for VB Star, the bakery, and the Moonlight Inn. The pace at which we do these will be uh, uh, determined by uh, uh, budgetary limitations, and we don't yet have all of the uh, proposals, suggestions, and alternates in place yet. But we're we're putting together a, a fairly comprehensive uh, list of uh, solutions for those three. Um, there may very well be some more minor repairs at the uh, at the uh, gate office, Penny, and I'm attempting to. Uh, uh, the question is of uh, one of uh, availability of the few contractors interested in doing that type of work. Um, but there will be somebody available to uh, to help us uh, continue some of the spruce up items that we had done last year and the year before. Um, we, uh, every year there's uh, something needed to make, make it a little better or a little more uh, amenable. We're also looking into uh, uh, handrail requirements at, uh, at a number of, uh, of uh, locations where they need to be uh, revised or uh, or upgraded and uh, that plays into the the Sandy Bay uh, steps as well. Um, uh, you've uh, got, if you chose to look at it, my uh, spreadsheets with the uh, numbers. And uh, with that, uh, that concludes my report. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Any questions for Graham? Steve? I, I just want to say that I think it's kind of important that uh, we note that a lot of these costs uh, that have been incurred now have been sort of postponed and delayed uh, for quite a long time. So um, it's not that council is sort of going spending crazy. It's that a lot of these things, they have to get done right now. Otherwise, we could put these assets permanently. Right. Um, you're right, Mike. And uh, uh, Penny will attest to the, uh, <laughs> the list of things that ought to be done on oh, no, right. municipal buildings. <laughs> You remember how horrendously <laughs> long that was? Uh, we're actually making some progress bit by bit by bit. So we've been playing catch up for years on municipal buildings, and we're we're narrowing the gap. I'm happy to say. Yeah, I'm 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 really pleased and very thankful that you're getting all of this organized, Graham. Thank you. I know it's a lot of work and a lot of back and forth with contractors, and finding yeah. contractors to do these little jobs is not always easy. So thank you very much. <laughs> Well done, Graham. All right, no further questions? All right, we will move on to Doctor, and that would be you, Erwin. Well, as Graham had just uh, mentioned, unfortunately we have to report that the doctor's office will not be operating this summer. Um, the committee in consultation with our lead doctor, uh, the doctor advised that uh, it would not be safe given the, the requirements of COVID and they felt that there was no way that they could continue to, to safely provide the service, keeping in mind the concern for the patients and uh, the doctors themselves. So, so can we put that, uh, we did receive a letter from the doctor through the committee. Can yes. we put that on our website and on our Facebook page to make that public? That was the intention. Okay. And can yes. And, uh, and of course, the sooner we get it, that up there, the better, because people seeing work on the roof might conclude that it's going to be open. Right. Uh, so uh, best to spread the word that unfortunately we're just not going to be able to open it this year. Um, Erwin, could you just, go ahead, Steve? Well, I was going to say that I'm, I'm just wondering because I, I, I did ask uh, uh, a couple of times uh, whether or not any of the precautions that uh, I had sent forward uh, had been uh, had been considered. I mean. You know, we're getting really close to crunch time here in terms of opening, and I don't know. In terms of not having a doctor's office, I mean, this this is this pandemic has been building since January. Specifically, it's uh, it, it's been deemed a pandemic for what two and a half months now, something like that. Um, but I just I don't know when 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 we're when we're being referenced that there's a lack of PPE, which we could have been looking for uh, when this was deemed a pandemic at the very least. 
um, and try to do some things to, to try to try to work with the doctor uh, over this time to do anything we could to open it. I just don't see any reason why we couldn't have already been working on this. I mean, obviously it can't be over now, but I would say that's a fairly large failure on our part. I'm not putting the blame strictly on Irwin and saying all of us, but we, like, we should have had the doctor's office open. I don't, just, I don't see any reason why we shouldn't have been able to do this. Except that the doctor said that they weren't coming. The, the, the decision was made by the doctor. But we could, but we could have been in consultation and preparing uh, and That's seeing what whatever we could have, uh, uh, whatever we could do to try to get it open. But I but think I just, yeah. I think that we need to own this one. No, I, I this disagree, Steve. Yeah, I disagree. Absolutely. This was this was a committee decision based on discussion with the doctors. The doctors are the ones who know they can't get the supplies they need. They don't have frontline staff in that clinic to sanitize uh, on an ongoing basis, to triage the patients. They can't separate. I think they've made the decision that they're comfortable with, and I think they're the ones who know where to get the PPE and where to get the supplies from. They deal with it in their own clinics daily. So I think they made the right decision here, and I, I, uh, I do support them. I don't think this is a municipal failure at all. Um, there's a lot more to it than just uh, protective equipment and, uh, and uh, clothing. If you read the doctor's letter uh, uh, very carefully, I mean, this is uh, um, uh, this has been uh, developing uh, uh, over time, and I, I don't I don't see how we or or the doctors. Uh, uh, committee could have done anything, uh, anything, uh, any, anything different. For most, most of the doctor's concerns uh, leading to his uh, decision are outside the scope of getting, uh, getting more uh, supplies. Um, and at any rate, it's not a council uh, decision. It's the doctor's well, decision and the doctor's committee's announcement. Um, Absolutely, but uh, as you said, there are there are clinics open right now. So if those if those clinics uh, are open, and they have the criteria that to make it uh, feel safe, again, we've had quite a long time to prepare, and we have and we can't get a clinic open. We have a clinic, but we can't get it open because it doesn't. Well, those those clinics that are open, Steve, and I'm not sure which ones, but I'll, I'll certainly accept what you're saying. Those clinics that are open are not short-term seasonal clinics they've been open uh, uh year round they were in a much better position to cope with the ongoing uh changing events ours is a limited uh short-term uh clinic a different uh, uh different arrangement altogether there is no uh, there there were no people in place to deal with ongoing uh uh, developments. There's nobody until the doctor arrives at some time, other than the committee, and they they did the best they could. And, and uh, we just had to uh, face the facts. I, I don't think comparing our our little summer clinic uh, to the uh, much larger uh, uh, year-round uh, institutional clinics that you're alluding to, I, I don't think it's a valid comparison. The the clinics that are you have, to, you have to remember that the. You know the doctor's office. They op the docs operate there by themselves. They don't have support staff. Yeah. They don't have the, the resources that would be necessary with COVID to to meet the safety standards. And, and as I said earlier, it was the doctor's decision. Exactly. The clinics that are open. That's a corporate decision. The doctors don't make those decisions. It's the ownership that makes those decisions. And doctors can decide whether or not they're going to work within those clinics. This was purely the, yeah. the doctor's decision, plain and simple. Right. Um, who's on the cl on the committee now, Irwin? The doctor's committee. Sorry, you're you well, Mike, microphone. muted. Microphone. Uh, well, there's Kathy yeah. Gibbon and Linda McMillan and uh, Mike Mason. Uh, oh, I don't know. Mike Mason. Mason that's correct. Cool. And one other person whose name escapes me. I don't have the file at my fingertips here, sorry. Is that Garrett Sircon still? Um, let me check and I'll report back in a minute, okay? Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think it's a slide person, but okay. Yeah. okay. All right, well, any further discussion, Steve? No? Okay, thank you. Thanks for your input, everybody. And uh, it's a difficult decision. I'm sure they didn't come by it lightly. And uh, it will be a blow to many in the municipality, but I think they have made the decision they need to make.
Um, moving on then to communications, Steve and or Mike. Uh, I've uh, I've asked uh, I've asked Raymond to uh, contact Allnet oh, yeah. to see where our new website is at. Um, uh, we're getting we're getting a lot of good feedback uh, from the new uh, RM Victoria Beach Facebook page. Uh, uh, people are hopefully people are recognizing it as the definitive authoritative place to come for news about the RM mm -hmm. as opposed to dabbling in. Uh, yeah. Conjecture and speculation. Yes. Um, yeah, well, that's, that's that's official. Yeah. So that's R and uh, Victoria Beach. Steve. Sorry, Steve. I, I suppose just on the uh, posters, I've been checking the posters uh, pretty much every every day to every other day, and they're all staying up. So uh, whatever happened with the last ones, uh, it, it seems like the person doesn't want to keep going. Um, just if anybody has, uh, if anybody notices any posters that have been taken down or are not there anymore, just uh, let me know so I can uh, go over and uh, replace it. Uh, um, I also gave uh, several posters after requests was made from the uh, tennis courts, so they now have uh, uh, have all the messaging that they need. Um, on Connect, though, uh, there are some people who haven't received uh, the notice uh, for Connect, um, and I think that is a uh, mail issue, or sorry, not that they haven't received it, but they can't uh, apply for it because we, they have to go to the website uh, to fill everything in. So um, I think that we sort of need to uh, make a tally and, and figure out how we can get an application to those people who don't have access to the internet. And that there are quite a few from the they, 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 they can phone, there, there's two options on the card, Steve, sorry. There's two options on the card. You can go on to the RM of Victoria Beach website or you can phone the Winnipeg office, and and the, the Winnipeg office number is right on the postcard, and and uh, and the the fine folks here will help them get set up so that we can connect with them yep. through whichever means uh, is is best for them, whether it's landline or cell phone or computer. Mm -hmm. I first yeah I absolutely personally... there's, there, there's some confusion about it uh, with, with those residents. So I have been telling those I have been telling those residents that. But it's just there. There is some confusion about uh, about how the, how they can apply. So, um, but it's just something to note. Okay. Okay. No, Raymond was know, Raymond was going to comment on that. I have personally registered people who phoned or emailed us for whatever reason they couldn't do it or didn't know how, and other mm -hmm. staff members have done the same thing. It's it's a very simple process. Yeah. Matter of and the claims went to everybody, whether they had an internet uh, service or not. All they have to do is uh, ask somebody or ask Raymond's help in uh, um, uh, online filling in the details. Okay, great. Thank you. Information gate. Um, we have two staff members. Uh, we are looking at uh, getting someone to help the ladies, the two ladies out uh, for the first little while. Um, uh, but otherwise, I think once we get some renos done or a few updates, we'll be ready to go. Council still needs to meet to discuss the uh, permits um, and, yeah. and what's happening at the uh, at the taxi and uh, parking lot area. There will be cabs this year, and we will be getting information out from uh, the operators, Kevin and Sandra Atia, to the public uh, in the next few days. The cabs here at Victoria Beach are going to be as safe as they are anywhere else. Yeah. So we'll get that information out to residents because we know it's important. We know they want to know what's happening, and uh, we will do that. Building inspector? Who's on that? Uh, I've got that. Uh, building inspector. Um, I've uh, submitted the uh, report as presented by uh, Curtis uh, uh, Bodwin, as he does so well. Uh, religiously uh, every month. A uh, quick rundown, and it's an interesting uh, list of the kinds of things that you need permits for, if anybody's interested. We have uh, three permits for additions, one for garage, one for foundation, one for boardwalk, one for leveling, one for deck resurface, one for buckhouse, one for deck. If you're not sure if you need a permit or not, the answer is you probably do, uh, but phone to Curtis and he'll, uh, he'll be happy to help you. Uh, the value of these permits is $137,200, and the permit fees connected, collected were $3,999.95. Um, uh, raise your price by five cents for this so we can make this round number on the next time around. I got a nickel for it. 
<laughs> and that's, that's the uh, building inspector's report uh, for the month of March. Thanks very much, Graham. Any uh, any comments for Graham? You mean the month of April, Graham? Um, uh, no, Irwin's reports uh, are always in the preceding month. He sends Curtis. he Curtis. sends the uh, the April report in uh, fairly early in May, and I have to hang it on the wall to remember to bring it up uh, at the second council meeting uh, of each month. So uh, um, his are always on the month preceding. Uh, as happened with some as happens with some other uh, uh, committees, it just depends on the. Uh, obviously, he could not have reported. Um, um, oh, I'm sorry. I've got, I've got my months mixed up. <laughs> this, this is me, isn't it? Pardon me. Uh, this is his report for the, for the month of April, uh, submitted in early May. And now you've got it, and I'm on the right page. Sorry for that, and thank you, Mike. Oh, thanks a lot, Graham. Me, me, me. Mike, it's amazing how to the it's, Yeah, it is me. Okay, good. I would like to clear uh, uh, just real quick because of that email that came in. Did you just want to speak to the uh, uh, the raise in the fees uh, for, for the uh, building inspector and why we were doing that? Uh, yeah, the uh, the uh, even though the building inspection service and it is a service that we provide to people, even though it is revenue generating, it produces a few bucks. It's still a, uh, an expensive operation, so we've been trying to uh, uh, narrow the gap on what it costs us by uh, raising the building fees to something uh, commensurate with uh, with what other municipalities do, and to narrow the gap so that there are net costs. Of operating a building inspector service is uh, is reduced. Yeah. Uh, um, Curtis puts in uh, a, a lot of hours. It's a lot more than just the the two days a week that he's out here. He's out here uh, during the week as often as is needed, and he also contributes. Uh, he also participates uh, to um, extend the amount of time, uh, as you know, on our uh, uh, zoning deliberations and other matters that would impact. Uh, 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 inspections uh, and zoning, but the uh, uh, that was some time ago that the uh, that the, uh, the the permit rates were were, were increased. And of course, if um, anyone engaged in a building or a renovation or addition, uh, you know that the uh, you know they know very well that the cost of the permit is really just a tiny pittance of the uh, total project uh, cost. So we, we think our new improved fees are uh, more than reasonable and they compare well to other jurisdictions. And just, just, just to comment that. from a budgetary point of view, uh, it is, I think, the medium term goal of the council to have the operations of the building inspector become revenue expense neutral. Mm -hmm. uh, in order to achieve that, we would have had That's to pretty, further yeah. increase the, yeah. the fees and, and we're looking at kind of a step function where uh, we will be gradually increasing fees over the medium term so we get to a, a revenue neutral basis. That's a very good point, uh, and thanks for reminding us of that, that uh, on a gradual basis, bit by bit, uh, we uh, long term plan to, re to uh, achieve uh, um, uh, neutral, neutral revenue status in that department. Right. Mike's been, Mike's got and, something. And I hope people remember that uh, not only is, is Curtis responsible for uh, overseeing the, 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 the standards of, of billings are kept, but he is also a very, very experienced contractor himself. If you have questions in general about projects that you, that you want to undertake in your property, feel free to call him. He's not just there to tell you how much it's going to cost for the permit. He can also advise you on 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 what uh, on what code is on a lot of different uh, on a lot of different building projects and uh, he's he's a really nice approachable guy yeah. too he'll he'll help you he'll answer your questions uh, that's a good point, Mike. I've had experience with the uh, building inspectors in, uh, in a number of the surrounding municipalities over the years. And, and uh, Curtis is one of the few who will look at your design, your idea, and if it's not quite right, he'll take the time to explain to you uh, how it has to be different. But lots of them won't do that. They'll say, well, that's not my job. Our guy, uh, our guy does a good job and provides a lot of helpful uh, uh, advice uh, to our residents. All right.
I, I think just sort of for the for the layman, I, I just wanted to clarify something, uh, just because it, it was the way that the the, uh, the note was written in that email, uh, which is that uh, right now the building inspector is costing the RM money, so the taxpayers are subsidizing uh, the fees for the uh, uh, for the building inspector. Uh, the idea by increasing the cost is not to is not to put further expense on the taxpayers to put that expense on the person taking out the permit who's do who's doing it. Yeah. So they're at the at the end of the day, they're the ones paying the uh, paying the money, not the taxpayers. Right. You're exactly right, Steve. Everybody who didn't build was theoretically subsidizing those who did. So we're trying to reduce that. Yeah. But also by having a building inspector, the rest of the community, uh, when someone does apply for a permit, the rest of the community is assured that what's going in meets the codes and the standards. So it is a protection for the rest of the community. It's not that you're not getting benefit uh, as a taxpayer, but um, you know, we're trying to even things out a little bit. You're good. Uh, that's good. All right. Thank you very much. Accessibility. Uh, the committee has put together a draft document on the accessibility standard for employment. Um, I'll be forwarding this information to Council in the next few days for review. There are emergency response forms for employers and employees and we've also utilized our current, oops my pen just broke, our current employee health and safety procedure uh, which is part of, part of the package and uh, Rod Bullman, who's the accessibility chair, got some of that information from our office here. So uh, we think the we think the plans are ready to go. We just need council to review and the office to make it look good, and uh, we should be able to get that passed and up on our website soon. So I will be passing that along. Um, heritage and trails. Steve? I did have a question on accessibility, okay. which is the accessibility uh, committee taking any consideration of COVID uh, as it relates to uh, the operations of the RM and, uh, and some of its um, uh, the businesses operating within it. They have not. They, um, they have not. It hasn't come up, but I know uh, any of the people who have used our facilities, our businesses, to my knowledge, have been very impressed with how they've been laid out and, and are dealing with COVID. They also realize those are mostly health issues or Manitoba health issues. And I think our guys are following the protocols very well, our businesses. But um, yeah, accessibility has not raised that concern. Uh, and, and it's probably not under the terms of reference of the accessibility committee to deal with matters relating to health. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, all right. Um, on heritage, um, everybody's fine with the uh, uh, with the, vol the volunteer um, uh, application form. So uh, if uh, if we're all good, uh, then I can forward it off to the uh, uh, municipality today, and then we can throw it on the website for considerations. Um, and that's pretty much it for heritage. Unfortunately, I, I was really hoping to gear up uh, uh, now that I'm all graduated and uh, summer's back, and I could I can. Uh, I, mean, I could theoretically go over and uh, start talking to people now, but uh, with COVID, unfortunately, it puts a damper on things. So hopefully, once the new uh, uh, the new uh, website is done, uh, then uh, the the new heritage page on there will be able to get submissions that way. Um, but up until we can really start seeing each other face to face, I think that's kind of going to be it for our heritage right now. Uh, one thing I should mention uh, is that uh, the editing for. Um, uh, last last year's play is done, uh, but uh, they're still considering how they're going to distribute it, and that does not uh, that's not a heritage committee decision because that was something entirely separate. Yeah, that's for the musical, right? Yeah, for yeah. the musical. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Anything? Uh, trim. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, trails. Uh, same problem, really. Um, uh, <laughs> There's uh, there's not there's not too much to report as to that from what uh, Mike already said with the a, the a, 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 trail not being uh, uh, close to uh, or B traffic. Um, the the biggest thing with trails is really trying to figure out how exactly we um, have uh, have trails that still maintain two meter distancing because as most people may or may not know, um, you can't pass somebody on those trails without uh, walking into the bush if you're going to maintain two meter uh, distancing. But aside from that. 
Um, there's not too much. To, there's not too much to report. Uh, I would note that uh, this winter, uh, the, the uh, cross country skiers had put out a uh, donation bin, um, and it was just something that they decided to do, and, and it was to help them with the cost of uh, their maintenance. And they raised. Uh, I'm drawing a blank, but I believe it was around three hundred dollars. Oh, wow. uh, wow. And, and the, all they were asking for was about a two um, so they got some larger donations uh, and and uh, and the two dollar uh, donations, but the cross country skiers, uh, uh, ski, skiing uh, trails, people seem to really like them. So and all of that's been taken care of now with the snowmobilers. So all those uh, issues are done. With. Great, thank you. All right. Um, any further questions on on our committee reports? No. All right. Uh, be it resolved that the May committee reports be accepted as presented. May I have a mover and a seconder? Oh. Mike's moving. Steve's seconding. Thank you. Any further questions? Discussion? All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. I can hear a bird in the background. I thought it was my chair for a second, oh. but <laughs> it must be at Steve's house because his hair is blowing in the breeze too. Oh, all right. <laughs> The berries are starting to come in, so they're happy. Oh, good. <laughs> Close the door. Close the door, Steve. <laughs> okay, we are moving on then to accounts and finances. Be it resolved, the following list of accounts be approved for payment. Accounts payable check 8295 to 8399 in the amount of $212,992.03 and May 15th payroll in the amount of $34,000. $555.96. May I have a mover and a seconder? That should be an Irwin move. Irwin move. Steve second. Thank you. Irwin, would you like to discuss? Or? Um, this list of accounts to be paid is larger than normal. There is one quite large item we've had to pay for our insurance, which is $86,700. Uh, secondly, there was a payment for the, uh, the new, freeze, uh, new freezer in the EB store, amounting to $9,400, and we did have to pay for those fair resistant bins for $22,000. Now that amount will be recovered, so it will be it will net up. But uh, the big item was the insurance for the year. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? All right. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. And Mike, would you please sign the chart, the list of accounts, please? Done and done, my friend. Thank you. All right. Moving. There is no business arising from the previous meeting, so we're moving on to other business. Uh, trail agreement, the Parisian estate, be it resolved, the arm of Victoria Beach Council approved the trail agreement between the estate of Elsie Parisian and the municipality dated May 19, 2020. Further be it resolved that the Reven CAO be authorized to, said, to sign said agreement. May I have a mover and a seconder? Steve, moving. I'll second. Mike, second. Discussion. I know there has been some discussion around the table on this. Erwin? My, my question relates to the existing agreement that was entered into between uh, the estate of Parisians and, and the Riverbird North Trail Association. Uh, the agreement that, that land lease essentially gave control of the right of way to Red River North. Uh, the agreement can be terminated, but it will require six months notice to be given by uh, the estate. Um, and that probably means that we will not be able to access that trail until after the six month period is, is expired. But don't you also think that if we give, you know, the, the uh, property owners still have, still have ownership of that land, they want to enter into a new agreement with the municipality, I believe they still have authority to determine who can go on their land, am I correct? And, not, and if I'm not a lawyer, but they, they did transfer responsibility and but they don't have uh, occupy, <laughs> occupancy rights to Red River North. I essentially occupancy rights. Um, 
I think this I think this gives the uh, property owner the comfort in knowing that if they terminate the agreement uh, that is existing, that they will have one standing and ready to go for uh, when that when that one ends. So it'll be a lot uh, a lot simpler if if it's done this way. Um, otherwise, I mean, if I was a property owner, I'd be asking, well, I'm going to be uncovered for X number of days or weeks or months until uh, another agreement can be put in place. But ultimately, I think it, it, it may or may not be up to, uh, up to them, but we have cut ties uh, with the Red River North, and this is just the final, uh, the, the final step that needs to be taken. Um, does the resolution before us now not supersede that prior agreement so that we're in the clear? Not until it's terminated. Okay. Yeah, it's a different agreement. Yeah. The agreement with Red River North Trails Association is an agreement of right of way. There's no lease. There's no, uh, you know, it's a, uh, yeah. So I think. Yeah, I, did, I, use, I use the term land lease. Uh, you're right, it is a right of way, but effectively it grants control of the, of the land to Red River North. Well, so I, I, I would say that this, this allows the six-month process to get started by having an agreement with the RM. Uh, and absolutely. I, it, yeah. it, it, it will, it, the availability of the, of the right-of-way will be dictated in the short run by Red River North. They may or may not exercise their, their current authority. Well... I hope no one brazenly walks between the boulders. Uh, yeah, uh, I guess that's on them if they want to yeah. to behave in that manner. Hopefully they don't. And, um, yeah. Do you want to add anything? No? No? Time will tell. Time will tell, right. Yeah. But again, uh, discussions with any, that have anything to do with, uh, with the RM and Red River Trails North should be through the, the CAO. Yeah. Through Raymond. Yeah. And we thank we do we have and we do thank Red River for all they've done for the community. Absolutely. But but uh, we have discontinued our ties with them and this is like Steve said, this is one more step. So we're where we want to be. Yeah. All right. And then so going forward from this uh, resolution, uh, notice that we'll be given to uh participate to uh, precipitate the six month cancellation of the prior agreement. That's up to the Parisians. Yeah, that would be up to the yeah. 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 Okay. Well, hopefully they'll do so, but that's beyond our control. Okay, looks like the right thing to do. Okay. All right, going back to the resolution then. Any further discussion? No? All those in favor? Carried. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on to the 2020 tax levy. Be it resolved that the RM of Victoria Beach Council approved the 2020 tax levy, total municipal expenditures of $2,790,000, 751, okay, $2,790,751.20. May I have a mover and a seconder? Irwin is moving. 20 cents of the backbreaker. I'll second. Uh, Michael second. Discussion. Um, I'll start. Um, uh, I still have some uh, difficulty with this. Uh, I'm not sure about the uh, uh, other members of uh, council, but I've, I've got some, some feedback and some input that suggests that um, uh, this is not a good year for a tax increase uh, in that uh, uh, many of our uh, residents are being uh, adversely affected or having their uh, their um, their uh, income somewhat reduced by uh, by uh, COVID. Um, um, however, I, I, I did the numbers, uh, just in round numbers, and um, what we would have to cut out of our budget to come up to. Um, uh, a bottom line figure of zero tax increase. Uh, Rowan, I know you've looked at this and Mike and I have chatted about it. Uh, I don't see how we could carve that much out and still get the job done that's uh, expected of us. But I'm, uh, I'm, I'm so uh, uh, conflicted by uh, 
the idea of a tax increase as a matter of principle this year. Uh, just to comment on that, you know, I think it's important that the council uh, at least keep up with inflation. We saw what happened in the city of Winnipeg when during Sam Cates' uh, era, you know, zero ta tax increases and we saw the infrastructure crumble. Uh, you know, putting through a tax increase approximately equal to inflation uh, is not unreasonable. And if you fail to do it sooner or later, you're going to have to double up and catch up. I think taking small little nibbles, 2% this year, uh, is, is not unreasonable. It, it, I, I, I agree with, with Graham. It is unfortunate that, that, we, that we have to do this. The cost of doing business. Doesn't get less. It doesn't get less. And, and also something that, that Steve alluded to, and he's quite right, we've spent a lot of money addressing things that should have been addressed a long time ago and needed to be addressed and we were on the cusp of some real infrastructure difficulties if we didn't spend that money mm -hmm. and if we and that uh, and and there are still things that have to be fixed that yeah. should have been fixed before uh, that uh, that are going to precipitate that spending next year and there's always something unexpected that comes up oh yes always the ever pleasant ever present and lovely surprise yeah so any further discussion? I, I, personally, I, I personally don't feel well informed enough to be able to uh, support this. I mean, what? with everything that's happened with COVID, um, our financial outlook is either maybe it's exactly the same or it's completely changed, but we're not having a doctor's office. There's no special events. Uh, the education costs, uh, I mean, the premier has uh, requested a 2% drop in, uh, in, in expenditures across the board or more. Um, and it's just without meeting to uh, discuss the, the budget one more time, exactly, at least relatively, because I know they're not hard figures, but, um, you know, I, I just, I, I can't support it because we, we have a bunch more information, but we're not using it, so. I have two comments to that. One is, um, if you're going to significantly change this, you're going to have to change your tax due date. We will have to redo everything. Uh, secondly, COVID, if anything, is going to cost us more money, not less. Some of these events you refer to have nothing to do with the municipality. We don't fund the VB club events or any of those types of things. So I don't see where there's a, a lowering of municipal costs. I only see additional municipal costs. You all know well, how much money I've already I mean, absolutely. Then, if there's additional costs that we know of now, then why aren't why aren't we talking about it? So then, that way, we can say, well, if we really need to increase uh, the mill rate, then let's, let's let's sit down and have a proper discussion about it. But we're sticking to something that we agreed to uh, what a month ago or something like that. Um, like it's a lot. A lot has changed. We have a lot more information that we can play with. And I mean, I I, I don't I don't I, I just think that we we should we should have had another uh, meeting to discuss like what we know now versus what we knew a little while ago before the pandemic even started what do we know what do we know now steve that we didn't know a month ago after four meetings about the budget what has what has changed uh, so dramatically that's going to cost less again there, there's uh, there's there's no doctor's office that's something that did just come up that's, but that's uh, what, there's, there's there's no doctor's office um and uh and and we we have now installed those uh the sanitization stations we're going to have to keep them filled there's there's a bunch of little different things here and there which i think need to be uh considered um but this is right this is raymond just said that if anything if, if covid is going to be costing us more money we should be taking a look saying how and that way we can say that this this is approximately uh how much we need to increase the mill rate by or even have a proper discussion saying, do we really want to do this right now? But I think we have had those discussions, Steve, several times. And you, no budget is going to be perfect, and every budget is going to have unexpected or, or uh, unplanned for expenses. The ones you're mentioning about hand sanitizer, the doctor's office, those are minimal, minimal expenses. Uh, but but it's just there, there are little changes that have happened all uh, all over our cost. I'm just saying that we, we know a lot more now than we did than we did two months ago before this was even a thing, and we're not talking about everything that we know now. So I'm just I disagree. It, the most, the, I just, 
the most essential aspect of, 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 of uh, successfully implementing a budget is putting a stake in the ground. And as Penny said, we've met on this budget numerous occasions and understood that to keep it to, in keeping with, the, with our financing model, we had to put that stake in the ground and get the budget together so that we would know what we were going to base uh, our finances on uh, going forward. So little things are going to happen. Yep. Some little things are going to happen. Some little things are not going to happen. But the thing is, is that without some type of well thought out, solid budget to go forward with, we are in analysis paralysis, and we're not going down that road. No. Sorry. Uh, um, the reality is that we need we need yeah. to get our tax bills out so that we can generate the tax revenue that is very necessary to keep this municipality flowing and functioning properly. Mm -hmm. um, to 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 suggest that we should have done it well, in my view, should have done it. Left the room about a month ago. Graham. Um, Thanks, everyone. Assuming that we're still open, still open for uh, uh, discussion, Penny. Mm -hmm. Yes, go ahead. Um, all right, I've, uh, thank you for your patience in allowing me to express my uh, reservations uh, as a matter of, uh, of uh, principle. Um, but uh, for me, uh, uh, Irwin has hit the nail on the uh, head. Uh, without a modest, a modest increase this year, we're going to have to double down on people at some future date. Uh, so that, that helps me decide. Okay. I'd like to add two comments to the discussion. Um, one is municipalities can budget for a deficit, but they are allowed to have a deficit. And you can recoup it in, the fall, in a subsequent year. Just like if you have a significant surplus, Council of the day can decide to use some of that surplus to cushion the subsequent tax year. Now, on the uh, the issue of extending or not passing this uh, these expenditures and bylaw today, we will be going to the bank and dipping into our operating line of credit because we're going to be out of money, and that's going to bring in very significant interest charges. So. It, thinking of saving money, you're going to add to the cost because it's thousands of dollars interest charges because we're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars of borrowing. Yeah. Right now we're borrowing out of our reserves, but pretty soon we'll have no reserves left to use to cushion the interest costs. So that's the other piece. If you delay this, uh, we're already later than normal in terms of passing uh, this bylaw, and delaying it any further, we'll be out of money. And that means going into our operating line of credit, and we have a max half million. So if we go beyond the half million, we've got to meet with the bank. And we're talking very significant charges. Okay. All right. Well, you don't, you don't, you don't need 100% uh, support. And the, the reason why I supported uh, both of these uh, the last time that we, uh, that we met was because well, we were, you know, I, I put it out there that I wanted to, to have a meeting over it. We didn't, and I'm just, I'm simply not comfortable. But you, you, you might have four. So there you go. That's all you need. Appreciate it. Point okay. of order. Point of order. Let's move along. Everyone has had their chance yep. to speak. They have. Can let's make. Yep. I will happily do that. And if no further discussion, may I call for the vote on the 2020 tax levy, please? All those in favor? Or uh, Graham, we can't really thank you go. very much for, and all those opposed? Steve, thank you very much. Carried. Thank you, Mike. And that is recorded, yeah? Nope. Nope. Bylaws nope. recorded. No, bylaws are recorded. You have to ask in advance. Well, it actually has been recorded, Steve. <laughs> yeah, but not by name. <laughs> not by name. Yeah. Not by name. Uh -oh. It's carried. It's just carried. Yeah, yeah it's recorded on video. I mean, video. I mean on the video. Right. <laughs> All right, moving along, we are going to the 2020 capital budget resolution. Be it resolved, the arm of Victoria Beach Council approved the 2020 capital budget. Total expenditures, $300,000. Uh, mover and a seconder, please. Irwin is moving. Seconder. Mike, oh, thank you. Oh, okay. Uh, Mike got his hand up first. That's because I'm live. <coughs> uh, can you speak to this, Raymond, the 300000 for yeah, me, please? Find that page, right. 
This is a capital budget. Yeah, so the $300,000 uh, capital budget uh, cons uh, consists of $175,000 for the uh, Victoria Beach, the 8th Avenue water treatment plant uh, generator and installation. The generator is just under $100,000. Uh, that's, of course, a, a, an educated guesstimate as to what the installation costs will be. Um, 105000 of that 175000 will be paid uh, by uh, reserve transfers from the capital development reserve uh, value of 50000 and the gas tax reserve of value of uh, 55000 There's also a provision for the Albert Beach utility to also have a standby generator. The number we have in there right now is $5,000. That would be funded through the gas tax reserve of 5000 That's why on page 13 of the budget, there's a total of 60000 55 going to Victoria Beach, 5 going to Albert Beach. Uh, the other items are uh, $20,000 for various equipment. That's going to be borne by the general reserve. And the other major piece is the Albert Beach type road improvements. Uh, we've got 125000 budgeted in transportation. A uh, hundred thousand of that hundred twenty-five thousand is going to be paid by a general reserve or a general reserve transfer. So the other twenty-five would come out of operating. This has been done to cushion the tax levy, to cushion the mill rate. Without doing that, your mill rate would be significantly higher than two point three percent. Now keep in mind that, or just a notation, the general reserve. There's 120 coming out, but there's a, a levy of 100,000 built into the tax levy. So it's not going to deplete it very much if all things happen the way they are. Now, I think the other thing that we can mention when we're talking about concerns over budget, uh, we've already awarded the contract for the Albert Beach Dyke Road, and it is well under 125,000. It's actually under 50,000. So there's some money right there that we could uh, save in terms of reserve transfers. We won't move the money unless no. we need to, bottom line. Okay, thank you very much. Any questions, discussion? Steve? Again, you know, I think we all realize the importance of that uh, water plant uh, generating system uh, to hopefully avoid uh, interruptions in water. And Albert Beach is certainly appreciative of the, this final effort to improve the flood proofing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And the, and the safety of that road. Yeah. Yeah. Steve? And, and there was a question raised about that road. Was that not the developer's responsibility? Well, uh, no. it's not on the developer's land. It's our road. That's municipal. It's, yeah. it's our road. It's our road, and we're obliged to maintain it to um, the uh, Acceptable standards. prescribed standards. Yeah. Well, the work will improve the safety of the road. We we saw what happened last year with that one rollover. Mm -hmm. That road is pretty treacherous, and it needs to be improved. Okay. All right. Not hearing any further discussion. I will call the question. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. Five-year capital expenditure. Be it resolved, the arm of Victoria Beach Council approved the five-year capital expenditure program. Total expenditures one million five hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. Mover and a seconder. Mover. Irwin, second. Steve, thank you. Discussion. Raymond. Um. Sorry, go ahead. When we, uh, when we put this together, and uh, five years is a long time, uh, there's some very large, uh, very round numbers in there. Uh, I think we recognize that uh, over time this will uh, will likely be uh, uh, refined, but we had to uh, uh, provide for everything that we can uh, we can think of uh, 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 on this. It's by no means a, a, a guarantee that these are the amounts that are actually going to be spent in those years. But it's a, it's a target, it's a plan, which we're obliged to come up with. Do you want to speak to that, Raymond? Raymond, correct me if I'm wrong, it's a requirement of, under our budgeting process, correct? Yes, it's a requirement to uh, to have a five-year capital expenditure program. Yeah, that's, Very difficult yeah, to predict. But we're, 
we're not committed to those dollars. That it's no. we commit on an annual basis. Yeah, it's a strategy. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Not Correct. all committed. You can change. You know, you you probably have things you want to add, things you want to delete over the course of time yeah. in the following year. So it's not written in stone by any stretch of the imagination. It's kind of a planning tool to think ahead. And you're not taxed on it. No, yeah. there's no tax. There's no tax so. consequence to the tax period no. whatsoever. Yeah. It's just a document that's required to be filed as part of the financial plan. Gives us a strategic direction. Right. Yeah. More or less, yeah. yeah. Any other questions? No? All right. All those in favor? <laughs> Carrie, thank you very much. <laughs> Moving on to bylaw 1608. <laughs> Be it resolved that bylaw 1608, fixing the rate of taxation for the year 2020, be given second reading. May I have a mover and a seconder? Mike's moving, Erwin's seconding. Thank you. Discussion? Is there much else to say? No? All right, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Uh, those opposed? One? Okay. Carried. Thank you. Third and final reading. This is a recorded vote. Be it resolved that bylaw 1608, fixing the rate of taxation for the year 2020, be given third reading and passed. A mover and a seconder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a recorded vote. Irwin is moving. I'll second. Mike is seconding. Is there any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Four. All those opposed? Steve, thank you very much. Motion's carried. Whew, okay. Okay, can I? I'll just, yeah. Let's just keep this moving, yeah. Uh, moving on to the tender for the fire hall generator installation. Due to, uh, due to distance meetings, <coughs> go to meetings, uh, council has received these tenders by email. So we need to make our decision before we can fill in the blanks. But be it resolved that the arm of Victoria Beach Council accept the tender from blank for the installation of a manual transfer switch for the standby generator at the fire hall for a total cost of blank, excluding ex applicable taxes. So if council could go to their email and go to the tenders that were sent, and yeah. we can effectively open them. I can't find mine. Oh, here they are. All right, the first one is from Onali Development. In Traverse Bay, Manitoba, all, all tender, uh, all, all bidders received the same package, the same information with input from, uh, from Stantec. So we had an engineer's input on this design, if you will. So from Onali Development, the total bid was $16,726.50. Is that right? That's with tax. That's with tax. That's, tax. that's for the fire hall. I was thinking, sorry, I was thinking the other one. Okay, so that's 16726 Long Beach Portable Gen Set sent in a quote. They are also from Traverse Bay, Manitoba. Uh, their total bid was $39,976. PST and GST are extra. Hmm. We have the third and final bid from Safe haven. Safe haven. Sorry, I can't. It's not coming up. 
No, it's okay. Uh, for twenty one thousand nine ninety four. For twenty one thousand nine hundred and ninety four dollars. Wow. So, discussion, uh, gentlemen. Has this been moved and seconded already? No, we can't move it and second it until we decide who is going to oh, be yeah. oh, good point. who we're Thank going you. to award it to. Okay. So we're discussing okay. the or the if bids. We, or if, we, if or if. What was the name of the uh, company? Because I can't find the actual name on that uh, on that bid. Sorry, which one? Which one? Safe Haven. The very first one is the first one is called On a Lee Developments. Yeah, On a Lee. It's on the top. It's uh, oh. it was the first attachment. The second one was from Long Beach, and the third one was from Safe Haven. Safe Haven, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Uh, a quick question, uh, Raymond, uh, it's my understanding that uh, there was at least five qualified firms invited to bid. There were five firms to bid, and two of the five did not submit a response back. I'll let Mike look at it, I don't want to name names. But there were two companies. No, no that's, that's all I wanted to know. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we, we reached out as best we could to everybody who we thought was a viable candidate. And that's, that satisfies me. Thank you. And it was on our website. Yep. So I'm sorry, I was listening to this. You say there were five. There were five people that we sent the, the five bid qualified to. Qualified yeah. companies. Now, as far as we're concerned, they're qualified. They're area companies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And three out of five bid. Yeah. Okay. And it's all Stantex specs. There were multiple pages of specs provided. Okay. So everybody got the same information. So there's quite a disparity here, yeah. gentlemen. We go from sixteen thousand seven hundred to uh, almost forty thousand, and one in the middle. Now, the, yeah. specs, the specs were the um, same. Right, well, you're searching for a name, so you know what to write in, so we can uh, call for a vote on an eventual resolution. Um, well, I'll, I'll start the ball rolling uh, by suggesting that uh, um, I, for one, or do any of us have any reason uh, not to accept the low bidder on this? Well, I think I, it's reasonable to not always go with the low bidder, but... My concern with the never, my concern with I, the, I, I, I don't know their work, so I, I'm, I'm not really as, as good of a judge there. I work with everyone else, but really, that's uh, the, should we disclose to uh, uh, sir, just for Steve's edification? Sorry, Graham. I'll I will send Steve a text. Yeah, um, it's somebody who we know, Steve, who we work with extensively. So. Uh, Mike, you were about to say something about the bids. Um, Sorry. I, I'm, I, again, I was I was a little concerned. Um, I didn't take comfort that uh, I didn't take comfort that that maybe the the uh, the extent of the work was understood because the uh, one quote that we received was was not informative at all. It was essentially a single line item and an amount. Hmm. Uh, it really didn't. It really didn't. It really didn't tell me that they fully appreciated uh, uh, what exactly the okay. uh, the tender called for. But I'm always. I'm always. I'm always a little bit leery about that. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've. 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 I've reviewed and responded to a lot of tenders in my career. Okay. The one you refer to, Mike, I believe, uh, specifically says on the uh, bid as per tender package and tech file and of course the file number mm -hmm. there were I don't know how many pages of specs provided to each contractor I personally emailed them mm -hmm. with the yeah. Stantec specs that, that's fine and the specs are fine but along with the specs there would have been a list of requirements like what is the work that has to be done um, that they're supposed to base mm -hmm. their yep. their quotes on yeah and I, 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 I didn't see any recognition of, of, of the work that, that had to be done. You know, I, it, it just, I, it concerns me, yeah. personally. Yeah, well, it's all in the package. Well, so what's all your bidding on it? Did, Graham? You know, does it do, uh, I mean, would more words in the quote have made you feel more comfortable as to the, uh, whether the, uh, the bidder properly understood what they got into. I think their their bid speaks for itself, and most of us know that this is a a, a firm who we have relied on. 
on numerous occasions over the years. Well, it depends which firm we're talking about here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, Steve, do you want to weigh in on this at all, or Erwin? I, I just, I, 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 have, I have a real issue with the fact that it's such a disparity. Uh, a disparity. And uh, as I said, I'm not really, I, I haven't seen Annalise work previously. I, I'm sure I've seen it around, but I, I haven't seen it in terms of working with them directly. And it just, Pretty, pretty much everything that Mike uh, summarized, uh, was, was, he summarized my concerns almost exactly. Um, but, I mean, if you guys have all worked with him and you know that uh, he, he, should, he, he should be spot on, then I don't know, I'm a little, I'm a little bit confused as to what to do there. Well, we're, I think we're obliged, are we not, uh, uh, um, um, Raymond? Uh, to evaluate these bids on their face value. They say what they say. Yeah. They either believe it or we don't. They were provided the package. They bid on the same Apple. All three of them bid on the same package that Stantec provided. It lists every possible thing I think you could think of. I didn't go read it because it's like, I think it was like 40 pages. I might be off on the numbers, yeah. but they had lots of pages. I would mention one thing, and I won't mention what it's from, but all the bids are higher than what I was led to believe would be the cost of doing the install. But so, that was yeah. But but arguably that was an unqualified. So it was unqualified, but it was from uh, it was from Stanton. Okay. All right. So, um, I, um, uh, once again, uh, Raymond, do you, do you have any concerns about the uh, uh, the uh, the, the uh, legitimacy and the validity of these three bids. Do you have any any uh, any doubts as to uh, the ability of all three of them to perform? Well, I can't comment on it any other and, and to say anything other than they were all provided with the very same information from a professional consulting engineering firm. So I have to right. I have to expect that Stantec provided the proper information, and that's what they bid on. So, yeah. I mean, I don't know. so, so you have every reason to expect they knew what they were doing when they submitted these numbers. I would. I would hope so. So, on Raymond, that question, Raymond, are we calling for any bid security? I don't any know bond? if it's in the tender, the full tender package. I mean, without reading through all of it, it'd, be, it'd have been the same for the others. Regardless of who would get the tender, would be awarded yeah. the bid, they'd all be subject to the same specifications and conditions. Well, as far as you know, there was no bonding included. I couldn't, I couldn't comment because I don't have it in front of me, so it wouldn't be fair to say. You know, it's not a large contract, so it may not have been appropriate. Okay. All right, gentlemen, I'm not hearing anything new. Um, we need to make a decision, mm -hmm. and we would like to get. I'm a little more comfortable when, uh, if Raymond, uh, if, if Raymond is saying that Stantec thought that yep. the cost is going to be lower, then that gives me a little more assurance for sure. Okay. Yeah, they, they were all higher than what we had hoped they were going to be when we started talking about this more than a year ago. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Anyway. Well. Let me review. Me. Okay, let me review. So we've got Safe Haven at 20, 20, almost 22,000. Annalee at 16,726. Long Beach at 39,976. Uh, they are all over what we somewhat, sort of what we expected. What did we budget for this? Uh, we had 20,000 to be on the safe side. Okay. All right. So. Um, hearing the discussion and, and realizing that everyone got the same package, the same information, the same, 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 I would recommend we go with uh, the, one, go ahead. Yeah, uh, just one, one final thing, um, uh, none of the three are uh, specifically uh, electrical contractors, uh, is that not the case? I think I don't think that's <laughs> so they, they will be bringing in whatever licensed electrician is necessary to to attend to those portions of the work. 
but I would certainly think that they would have brought those same electricians yeah. in to help them craft the, the proposals. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. But we need not be concerned about the fact that none of the three are, in fact, uh, uh, electrical contractors themselves. Mm -hmm. They're serving more as a, a, a general contractor on this work. And then that's fine. I'm just. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just raising that flag well, before we all understand. That's who applies. Okay. Uh, please. Uh, Let's go ahead, Penny. Uh, what are you, what are you got first? Laura? My recommendation would be with to go with the lower bid. And that would be Anna Lee at 16, 7, 26, and 30 cents. Um, yeah. 15,934 tax, because that's the way the resolution is. 15,934 tax? Yeah. Is that the resolution? Well, I need I need to know that council what council wants me to put on the the resolution. So uh, I need. I'll, to I'll go with I'll go with Emily. Okay, that's two, three, Steve, four, Mike. Um, you can put Emily on the on the. Okay. Yeah, you can go. All right. So going back to the resolutions. Sorry, I'll be right back here. Be resolved, the arm of Victoria Beach Council accept the tender from Onalee Enterprises, I believe. Onalee Developments, Developments Limited for the installation of a manual transfer switch for the standby generator, generator at the fire hall. Total cost of $15,930. It says excluding applicable yeah, taxes. That's right. Because that's before the tax. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I need a mover and a seconder, please. I'll move that. Graham's moving it. We'll give uh, give it to Steve to second. Thank you. Any further discussion? No? All right. All those in favor? Mike, all those opposed? I'll abstain. Mike will abstain, okay. Carried. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Up next was the fire hall water tap for discussion. Mike. Ah, thank you. Thank you, Madam Reeve. Um, a couple of years ago, after uh, delivering great quality water to the residents of Victoria Beach, uh, both seasonal and year-round. The well uh, finally failed that serviced the tap at the fire hall. Uh, realizing that we needed a, a quick fix of the situation because of the number of people that depend on this tap for a source of water, we had tied this tap into the new well uh, that was dug specifically for the Public Works building. Knowing that the quality of the water was not as good uh, with the Public Works uh, building well. We, uh, although it has been tested and shown to be potable, uh, the water at the fire hall is not palatable. Uh, it's, it's typically uh, uh, filled with particulate. Uh, depending on the time of year, sometimes it may settle to the bottom of the container after a couple of hours. Sometimes it doesn't. So. The potability is, uh, is, is not in question here. However, uh, this is water that, uh, that people depend on year-round, and a lot of other people depend on in the non-summer uh, season when, uh, when the seasonal water is on. Because we have always provided quality water out of this source, I don't think that the residents who depend on this water should be penalized in quality because it was a quick fix. Now, Public Works has had to take steps to make the water uh, tolerable within uh, the Public Works building. And I think we should be extending the same courtesy or at least investigating what it is going to cost us in terms of time, certifications, and money to continue to deliver the same quality of water that we've delivered to residents who depend on it as a source of water in the past. 
Discussion, um, Graham? I'll, uh, I'll agree with Mike uh, on that. I think we need to quantify uh, what would be uh, uh, what would be involved. Exactly. Uh, what are the procedures? What's the ritual? And, and, and what's the cost? Uh, I think we need to know that before we can decide whether to uh, uh, fulfill this uh, this uh, deficiency and and when we need to we need to know uh, how much and this as Penny has pointed out um, uh, there's uh, there may very well be more to it than just uh, simple full filtration but I, I would argue that uh, okay then uh, we we have to get to it let's let's start figuring out what would be involved and how much is it going to cost okay that's what I'm looking for. Ultimately, the, ultimately the water is potable, um, but uh, I don't, I don't see any reason why we wouldn't at least explore the idea of cleaning it up. I mean, I've been, I've been trying to use it. Um, it, it really does not taste good. But we also have to understand that a lot of permanent residents do use that water exclusively for their drinking water and for their uh, and for their needs. So it's not it's not a matter of saying, well, you know, uh, it, we can just get rid of it or just leave it as is. I mean, these are residents who are being forced to drink it because they either don't have the uh, finances to be able to put it in a cistern and pay for uh, the ongoing cost of throwing it up, or they don't have the, uh, the, uh, the money to put in uh, to put in a, uh, a well. So. Um, I don't see this as being a small issue. I see this as being a public service that uh, the RM has backed for a substantial amount of time. And just because the well failed doesn't mean that we have to give up on the residents. Right. Right. Um, I don't. Uh, there, there could very well be uh, quite a number of person hours. Uh, uh, time spent uh, investigating this uh, to come up with a, a solution and a number, but I don't think I don't think there's any big expenditure involved in uh, quantifying this. In quantifying it, no. There may be more. No. There will definitely be more of an expense in in uh, in the in the final solution. In the final solution, if we come up to one. Well, the sooner, who's to say? The sooner we face, the sooner we face it, the better. Yeah, maybe. It's Maybe it's totally beyond our means. Well, let's, let's find out so we can at least explain to our uh, uh, residents what we're doing or not doing and why. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then look for alternatives. Is there something else that we can do? Well, the, the, other, uh, the uh, other thing uh, to bear in mind. low cost alternative might be for 6,000 bucks to drill another well. Who knows? Mm. The other alternative is. is or the other things to consider, I should say, is I do, we are not obligated to provide this drinking water. There are there are other trainer water that you can purchase. I, I'm I know that it's not a that it could be a financial burden for some people. I'm just saying there are other options. We aren't obligated, to my knowledge, to supply this drinking water from the fire hall, but it has been a service that we have provided. And I know years ago they had a lock on it when mm -hmm. uh, when the old well was there. And they handed out more keys that got lost. Uh, there was a great expense in keys and locks. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also not just our residents who use this tap. So, you know, if we are willing to provide the service, we have to be just like our recycling and garbage bins. We have to be willing to accept that it's not just our residents. So, are we going to ask our residents to pay for other people to use it? And but until we know what. But solutions are out there. We don't know what that cost will be. So I think Mike's got a valid point. We should we should investigate what it will take and and what the cost will be to. Let's let, let's that. start the process of uh, determining what would be involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who would who would provide some options for us? Uh, well, probably start with the framework. First thing we should do is go to the Office of Drinking Water. If they're the, if they're the de facto authority, yeah. they'll tell us what we need to do. And yeah. we'll take it from there. Yeah, and I think you know, and, you know, uh, go talk to some uh, companies that uh, dig wells. I was actually talking to uh, uh, my plumber uh, the other day because he had to come over and uh, uh, fix something, and he was saying that uh, he's had very similar issues. And sometimes there'll be a very cheap fix, like just a, a finer uh, filter at the bottom of the well. Other times there'll be something different. But uh, he said ultimately the best person to uh, go to is. Are the Dell, uh, or sorry, are the well digging uh, uh, companies? So we could uh, approach them, and yeah, sure, the office of drinking water, why not? 
Well, the Office of Drinking Water needs to be... They're the ones be, that are going to sign off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we're going to, we may need approvals from the Office of Drinking right. Water. So that's where... Yeah, the, it's water, right? So, I mean, you're just putting in uh, equipment to make it even better. It's not that it's simple. Better, we can't just put equipment in. If we put equipment in to make it better, it, it may, in fact, turn it into a water system, which requires approvals. But, again, I'm... I'm speculating on that, yeah. but uh, Trevor knows what, who we have to talk to, and uh, Raymond can work with Trevor to figure out where to start. Yeah, Raymond, are you agree, uh, do you agree to start that process yeah, with sure. Trevor? No problem. Yep. Yeah. Good. That's all okay. we can do for now, and that's yeah, all that's all that's all that's all Thank you. Yeah. Come, back, come back to us with some options. Yeah, yeah we'll do our best. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good discussion. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Anything else? Um, I'll move on down to correspondence. Is there anything in correspondence that has not already been answered by a council member or CAO? Erwin? Sorry, Steve. Uh, I received a, an email from one of the Albert Beach residents. Uh, apparently on the weekend, there were a number of people who were parking along Safi Road up by where Pitt Road intersects Safi. Uh, and there was some concern that there are no signs. I had brought this to uh, Public Works' attention last fall that someone stole our no parking sign. And also, there was, it was pointed out that people are parking down by the Albert Beach pump house because, again, the signage saying no parking has been mysteriously removed. So we'd like to Public Works to, to review the signage at the end of uh, Safi Road and down by the pump house, please. Okay. Um, this touches briefly on what uh, Penny said, correspondence, which uh, uh, outside of what's been re replied to, um, uh, we all received a, a, a detailed email uh, uh, as far as the uh, the uh, tax increase, and it's it's worth mentioning that uh, Raymond's response to that looked quite satisfactory to me. Thank you, Raymond. Yep. Thank you, Steve. You uh, you wanted to jump in here. Oh, you're muted. You're muted. You're muted. Steve, there we go. Uh, yeah, sorry, I was just uh, moving something around so I could uh, just get it. Okay, here. Um, there's uh, there's been an ongoing problem that uh, the RM hasn't really ever addressed, uh, aside from uh, the obvious being that uh, we pay uh, substantially more uh, tax to the, uh, uh, to the school board. And we all know that. We all know about that issue. However, the one thing that hasn't been addressed is the fact that uh, many of our students are having to uh, drive in, uh, in a uh, bus for over an hour uh, or two hours in some cases down to either uh, the South Park High School or uh, to Walter White. Uh, Walter White, of course, being about 15 minutes away, but because of the bus routes that they have, um, that some of the students are, are driving about an hour. This is, I think, important for two reasons. Number one, we do pay more tax than uh, the others in the uh, in the division, but uh, the most important thing is that when we're talking about uh, the future of our, um, our municipality and youth, every every step you put in the way to prevent a child from getting to school or being able to focus on their studies highly increases the risk of them turning into uh, just bad decisions. Um, and in the last in the last little while, we've had uh, three. Uh, three girls um, have been uh, killed because of drug overdoses, um, and one of them was uh, just uh, 22 years old. Uh, and there's also uh, uh, um, a local boy who's uh, been taken away again, just as a result of bad decisions. I'm not saying that it's, it's strictly is based. Right? How, is this correspondence, Steve? How is this relating to it this is, council? It is, it is. I, I, got, I got I got an email. I I got an email on this. Um, and the, the, the resident is very concerned. I, I didn't realize that this was an issue up until I received this. Um, so I think that council needs to sort of uh, address this uh, with the, uh, uh, with the uh, school board, um, but I did promise this person that I would be bringing it up um, and, and addressing it because no child should have to drive two hours to a school and then two hours back, so four hours a day in travel especially when we're paying so much in, in taxes. I'm not sure that this is our responsibility. Uh, well, we, we, we pay over two a year the Selkirk School Division. I mean, we, we pay for the uh, buses that are coming over to get our students. 
So, I mean, we don't really, we're not able to get uh, proper representation up here. So I would say that for spending $2 million, we can at least have a conversation with the school board to say, hey, like, this is a pretty large issue. You need to be addressing it. I mean, but what do you I mean think, we're what supposed do you, to be... What do you think, they, I mean, could, what do you think they could do? This is what, I, I, I don't know, but what do you think they could do differently? The schools uh, are uh, where they uh, are. Redirection. It, it could be it could be as simple as uh, um, uh, doing a new uh, plan for the uh, for the bus routes. It could be uh, something along the lines, uh, possibly a, uh, a bus stop here, so that the uh, bus just drives and picks all the kids up and leaves. Um, but regardless, there are some things that could be done. And either way, as I said, uh, we should be trying to bring it up because up until now, this hasn't really this hasn't been brought up, but it has been an ongoing issue. Okay. But we're, we're also only hearing from one individual, it sounds like. Perhaps the, the parents of the students should get together um, as well. I mean, I, I, could, I could get her to uh, grab a couple of uh, a couple other parents to, together so that we can all go as a group. But again, um, I don't think anybody, uh, anybody uh, who's, who's in this meeting right now would agree that any child should, uh, in our municipality should be driving four hours a day. But they've been doing it for years. I'm not sure that that's going to change. Well, it can't change unless you challenge it. And, I and yeah. Steve might be onto the idea. Um, I don't think any of us around the table are directly affected by this, so we really can't begin to appreciate yeah. uh, what this is all about. I, I've never, I never rode a school bus. Uh, I? I have friends and relatives who did ride a school bus. Um, if you could get the parents together and come up with some suggestions, some mm -hmm. actionable suggestions. Bring those to council, and let's see what we can do to uh, to try and 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 lighten the the travel load of, of these students. Because there are, uh, I mean, there there are what, thirteen of our thirteen of our kids many. that go to Selkirk, and I don't know how many go to Walter White. I'm not sure. I don't know. Yeah. To be honest, I yeah, don't know I, I how don't, many students either, we but, have. But it would be it would be interesting to, to to hear what they have to say in terms of possible uh, remedies, Steve. Yeah. And I mean, if they've got something uh, whereby uh, uh, RMVB can uh, uh, speak on their behalf uh, to Lord Soccer, can view the amount of money we send those guys. For sure. Uh, yeah, let's see, what, let's see what you can come up with. Mm -hmm. I think the appropriate route should be the parents should be approaching the their school trustee because that's the line of communication that has to happen. The municipality has no authority no, and no responsibility. All we get to do is collect the taxes. Uh, we have no control over what the, what uh, Lord Suffolk School Division does. So the individual parents who are permanent residents should exercise their rights to communicate through to their school trustee. Well, we could certainly show support to the parents. Absolutely. Yeah, good suggestion. Okay, Steve, so maybe go back to the parents and... Yeah, no, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go talk to her. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks for bringing that forward. Anything else in correspondence, gentlemen? Okay. Raymond, do you have anything? Mike? I keep looking this way and I sometimes forget to look your way and you're right there. So. Okay. Um, and there have been some, there have been some questions Sorry, about correspondence, but I just want to remind people that not everybody wants their correspondence read out loud. If you send something to council, it's generally for council to consider and respond to. It's not, um, uh, it's not generally public knowledge. You have to. You, 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 you uh, have to it's a uh, suggestion that we have to regard uh, correspondence to our council as being in confidence unless otherwise specifically yeah. Yeah. specified. Because some people have asked, you know, why aren't you listing correspondence anymore? Well, not everybody wants it listed who yeah. sends it in. So exactly. that's, that's where we're at. Steve, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, it's, it's just one final thing of, uh, on, on the COVID issue. And I, I just want to remind people that, you know, it's, there, there's no magic order, uh, even though we so, sort of all know that feeling when you finally get to the beach. Um, but there's no there's no magic border that the second that you cross uh, the Victoria Beach uh, municipality border uh, that suddenly uh, tells COVID, the COVID virus to go away. Um, we still have to be practicing our social distancing and all and all provincial measures. Um, there, 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 there's been there, there's been quite a quite a few people that have been watching 
uh, pass by that uh, they aren't uh, they aren't practicing. So I just wanted to put that message out just to just remember it's still it's still around us and it's still here. Right. Good point. Okay. I had received word that uh, that actually uh, a seasonal resident of, of Victoria Beach, they haven't been to the beach yet this year, uh, but they actually were the latest to succumb to COVID in Manitoba. Hmm. A seasonal resident. Yeah. So again, they haven't been out to the beach, but I mean, it, it can be that close to home, folks. So sure. mind the COVID. Nobody's, nobody's immune. No. And uh, remember, this is a smaller nest. <laughs> One other thing while I'm thinking of it, this weekend I had a few conversations with residents, summer residents who are concerned about the fact that our playground is still closed, our play structure. And my comment was that, that it is a safety, a health and safety issue for the children. Um, the argument was that other jurisdictions have their structures open. Some schools, some parks have their play structures open. And I said at the moment, Council passed a resolution that we were going to keep them keep it closed. Uh, we have not discussed it further, but I think that's something. Again, it wasn't correspondence; it was just conversations I had with people. But um, I still think it's important to keep it closed. But yeah. I think it's something we can well revisit. And, and, and uh, uh, some of these other uh, facilities uh, are supervised; uh, ours isn't. Can be. Yeah. Children don't show the virus in the same way as adults. Exactly. So if they're open, then you're, incre you're increasing the risk. And our, mun our municipality, um, if there were to be a breakout here, it'd be a full-blown epidemic because we're all so close together. I, I, I don't see any reason why we would open it. I know, it, I know it's hard. Um, I, I know that kids need some version of play, but they still have space around their yards and other options. It, I, 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 I'm not happy about it, but I fully support uh, leaving them closed. Okay, I just wanted to make yeah. sure you were yeah, on the side of you're on the side of caution in this case here. Yeah. And with something we can revisit if if uh, we make it through the next two or well, three we weeks. We can revisit weekly, whatever uh, yeah. uh, whatever is the right thing to do. Yeah. Okay. All right. I have nothing further. Anybody else? No. All right. Moving on to adjournment, be it resolved that the May 19th, 2020 regular council meeting be adjourned. Next regular council meeting to be held June 2nd, 2020 at 1 o'clock at 705 1661 Portage Avenue in Winnipeg. May I have a mover and a seconder? Steve's moving. I'll second. Mike is seconding. All those in favor? It's been a busy one. It's been a busy one. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks for the great discussion. Thank you.